pace are at record levels. Mm, suggested a job that's tough at the best of times. It's getting tougher all the time. Not that recruitment uh, is being uh, affected. The police aren't short of uniformed officers. What they are short of is detectives. Mark Williams Thomas is a former detective who, for The One Show, has been investigating why fewer and fewer ordinary coppers are going for promotion to CID. The thrill of the chase. What do I do? What do I do? The hunt for clues. Just give me the name. And putting criminals behind bars. I see Arnold Malone brought to book. I can retire a happy man. You'd think no one could resist. But tonight, I'm on the trail of the lost detectives. I loved my time in CID. So I want to find out why the detective is now the subject of a missing person inquiry. Detective Sergeant Ray Lewis has been trying to get the lowdown on just how many CID posts are unfilled. You say there's a shortage of detectives. How big? How big is the shortage? Well, about 18 months ago, the Police Federation did a survey of all the police forces in England and Wales to try and ascertain how many detectives were missing. And at that time, we came up with about 4,500 vacancies for trained detectives throughout England and Wales. And that's scandalous. So that's four and a half thousand unfilled jobs. It's one heck of a vacancy list. So what's the view from the front line? One serving detective constable did agree to talk to me. Why would a police officer not want to become a detective? I think impossible workloads. Often the shift systems um, are not as attractive in, in the CRD environment, whereas my uniformed colleagues, they can earn extra overtime, rallies, marches, detectives don't do any of those sort of things. I don't think morale's right. I don't think they can deliver the job they want to deliver and I think there's other jobs out there that, um, that appeal to them more um, and that's, that's simply, simply that. But is this more than just police officers complaining about overtime and working conditions? This man thinks so. Few of us can forget the harrowing case of Jamie Bolger. Albert Kirby led that inquiry. He's retired from the force after 30 years in CID and he's worried that ultimately victims of crime will pay the price for the shortage of detectives. You must remember now that all aspects of crime work are subject to scrutiny under the laws of disclosure. And lawyers now, they're looking at the whole process of the investigation. And if they're finding flaws, which they are, those prosecutions are failing. Not because someone's not guilty, but because the officers, through lack of experience and supervision, are making basic mistakes in their inquiry. And if that's happening, then we should all be worried. All officers have to start on the beat, and so it should be. But if increasing numbers are reluctant to make the move into CRD, then the nation's chief constables need to do something about it now. One way police forces are plugging the gap is pretty familiar to BBC One's viewers. Call me old fashioned, get working on one of our actual cases. <laughs> Just like in the television drama New Tricks, retired detectives are once again reporting for duty. Where will I find this sister? And one expert believes that this, along with employing more civilian staff in CID, should actually improve detection rates. Now there's a lot of criticism applied to civilian investigators that they're actually de-skilling detectives are in post. What do you think about that? I'm totally in support. Uh, civilian investigators support detectives to do a wonderful job at detecting and resolving crimes. For example, taking statements, recovering evidence, searching property and the like that frees up the detectives to concentrate on their particular skills and uh, interview people and arrest people. But myself and others are still concerned that unless more police officers are trained for a career in CID, then the case of the missing detectives will continue to go unsolved.